Hey there, and welcome back to the channel. Maverick here with another episode of ReZero Season 2. So, last episode, uh, we got done with the entire Garfield storyline and whatnot. Um, I'm not gonna go too much into it, I'm just glad that it's over with, so we can finally move on to the, the, uh, more interesting parts, right? At least for me, uh, because now Amelia is taking the trial once again, and uh, apparently she is, uh, fully aware of Ekidona and is even talking to her normally and whatnot. And I have been waiting to learn about Amelia's backstory for so long now. Uh, I just finished Frozen Bonds like a, a couple of weeks ago and I was hoping to learn more about her backstory, you know, her past at that point. It wasn't there. Um, and I was really hoping that Emilia would tell Subaru, but that hasn't happened yet. So I don't know, maybe now we'll get to see some final closure or not, or they could continue to tease us and so on and so forth. Because it's so important, right? I want to know, like, why is she so similar to Satila and whatnot? And especially with Ekidona there as well, I do feel like we can get some answers out of this. And then finally, you know, even if not, right, even if we don't get some answers, once we get done with, with her trials and whatnot, maybe, potentially, we can finally end the entire Sanctionary storyline and also, go back to the mansion and start that storyline, right? Maybe we can finish this checkpoint, go back to the mansion, and figure out what's going to happen to Elsa and Beatrice, and so on and so forth. So, let's just get into the episode. Alright, let's begin in 3, 2, 1, play. Oh. Hey, I remember this scene. Exactly because... Because I just saw Frozen Bonds a few weeks ago. You know, I ha- Huh. And yeah, also, about Puck as well. Like, who exactly is Puck? Why is he talking like he knew about Amelia already? Though, now, potentially, we're never gonna know because, you know, he also broke his contract with... Pres uh, I think Ekidona, right? I'm guessing Ekidona, just based on the voices that, um, that was heard back then. Oh, is this actually going to be a flashback episode? We're in the forest. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Because, you know, she is facing the trials of her past, right? <laughs> She's like, you energetic girl. Reflects the cut. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> I don't know why I'm amused so much, but I really love the fact that Emilia and Ekidona are talking to each other so normally. <laughs> Okay. So we are going to to relive Amelia's past, right? That's probably what this is implying. 
So it's kind of different from Subaru's, right? For Subaru's, the past that he went through, he was there as him. Whereas for Emilia here... Opening? Uh, no. Is that small Emilia? Yeah. It's small Emilia. Lolly, Lolly Emilia. And that's her mom, right? Yeah, this is this is interesting. So she's not actually reliving the memories as herself, but more as an observer. Brother silver hair. Oh. Okay. Huh. I always thought that was her mom. Okay, apparently not. Right, and I thought that the fact that, you know, it was like capital Ma M for mother is just because... I don't know, like their royalty or something. So, you know, speaking with more in a more polite form. Hmm? Nope. Hmm. This is where something bad is about to happen, isn't it? <laughs> She's cute, though. Wait a minute, those robes... Aren't they... Aren't those from the witch's cult? Wait, Betelgeus? Yeah, that's Mats that's Matsuoka's voice. That's Betelgeus. Gius, or whatever you want to call. My brother and sister. Your brother and his. Okay. That was a lot of information just right there. Did I see that correct? Emilia is a child of incest? And holy shit, this is here. What? So yeah, those are the witches cult, right? <laughs> so what happened to Vitellius? Or Gias? Like why did it- What? What in the world? And why are the witches called- Are they actually the witches called right now? Emilia Sama. Hmm. 
Wait, so are they actually still the witch's cult? Yeah, romantic hunty. Vitalia's romantic hunty, right? And also, the way that Fortuna talks, right, that Sugoku. Isn't that. Uh, what was that? Isn't that what. Isn't that Roswell? The way Roswell speaks? Get back, get back, go! Go! <laughs> oh man. Quick, start rolling around. Just roll around in, in on the floor or something. Okay. <laughs> hey, good thinking, Amelia. Yeah, why well, is because that's very distinctive, right? The way that she speaks. Various. <laughs> like I said, <laughs> for some reason, I'm finding their interactions so funny. <laughs> I want more of this. I want more of Emilia talking with Ekidona. Oh, damn. We are actually going to get a lot of these this past. The COA. I no I no idea what the seal is, but that's probably going to be uh no right. Is that why she started eating nuts afterwards as well? Or had a diet of them? <laughs> you know, I bet there's going to be like a whole new faction popping up who likes Lolly Emilia, right? There's definitely going to be a faction that branches off and say they love Lolly Emilia. Is 
Oh, she's flustered. It's okay. Hmm? So I'm guessing something is gonna happen in the past that breaks the seal, right? And that's where everything turns to shit. The two of them? Probably Amelia's parents? Oh wait. The spirit is gonna bring her to the seal? Oh, What are you up to, spirit? This can't be good. That's the seal, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, Ekidama didn't know about this? I thought she knew everything about Emilia already. <sighs> Emilia's going to open the seal, isn't she? <laughs> And then, of course, <laughs> stop right before the most important part, eh? Oh, are they talking about, like, what he wrote <laughs> within the, uh, on the walls or something? Wait, that's a love letter? I thought those were just words of encouragement or anything. Granny's <laughs> boy. Okay, so they're not going to tell us what either. Okay, fine, anime. Be that way. But this is where she this is where she's gonna open a seal, isn't she? <laughs> you don't even know just little girl. <laughs> Oh wait, nothing happened? She's gonna be discovered, isn't she?
Oh. Jesus is not supposed to meet with Amelia, right? Yeah. Yeah. Jill's definitely kind of worships her for another identity, right? Granted selfish. Okay, never mind. He he is definitely still crazy even. Well, okay, maybe not crazy, but he's definitely still part of a cult or anything or something like that. So, who was Amelia supposed to be? I mean, if Wait, what was he the archbishop of? Of greed? Yeah, what, what was that? What was that factor? What was that? Which factor that he had? Pride? It was pride, wasn't it? I can't. I can't remember. What? Is she feeling jealous or something? Okay, so this is where are they going to the seal? I thought he was forbidden. There's the <laughs> Yes there are definitely going to be people. <laughs> Who follow the cult of Lolly Amelia as well. You never go to that place. So she okay. So there's like a many times and she wasn't mad. Oh. 
Ah, is this why she is so intent on keeping promises? Wait, I can already guess this, right? She's going to break a promise, and so that's when, what's going to cause all the tragedy and whatnot, isn't it? Yeah, it's definitely Vitellius. <laughs> it's definitely a more refined and polite Vitellius, but it's definitely still Vitellius. Huh. Okay. So it wasn't actually anything bad. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Definitely going to be a cult of lowly Emilia. And who can blame them? She is cute. Ooh. Okay, these two definitely have some feelings for each other. A life. Why do you have a long lifespan, though? So he's definitely not human, right? Okay, nice going. Yeah, that's a good way of speaking. Of speaking. There has to be a relationship between her and Roswell. Wait, ending song? Oh, or is it actually Fortuna that broke her promise? Huh. Okay, everything was way more wholesome than I expected. And here is, I think, like, the seal is going to be broken and then everything would go to hell. I guess we haven't gotten to the main part yet. Oh, okay. Maybe I spoke too soon. Okay, so this is where the real deal starts, right? And who are you?
Ouais. Who the hell are you? My authority. Authority. One of the cults. Archbishop representing greed. Wait, greed? What? Okay. I will see you guys after this. Holy shit. Holy shit, guys. We just got a shit ton of development and uh, stuff to talk about here. I guess it's to kind of make up for the lack of development in the last episode and whatnot. But basically, oh, there is so much to talk about here. So let's put some basic things out of the way first. Number one, I absolutely love how Ekidona and Emilia are interacting with each other, the dialogue with each other, with Ekidona being the more sarcastic, uh, you know, very sting stingy kind of, of person, you know, with her words and whatnot, whereas Emilia still managed to, to deflect them off as usual and, and keep a cheerful attitude uh, above it. I, I really love the way that they talk to each other and whatnot. Um, in fact, you know, as twisted as this might sound, I even sorta of kinda of feel like Ekidona is this older sister to Emilia, right? Definitely a very haughty and a very, um, you know, how can I say it? Not a very nice older sister, if you will, but I don't know. It, it just, their interaction with each other just gives me that kind of feeling in a way. Uh, don't get me wrong, I definitely don't think there's any love, um, between Ekidona and Emilia. Any love that Ekidona has for Emilia. But, I mean, I'm just talking, I mean, there's plenty of sibling relationships that aren't exactly on the best of terms either right so for some reason they just give me that sort of vibe and I actually love it I do hope that we see more of that in the next episode as well which should be should still be true since we are still in this uh, past slash dream world in the next episode as well so bring me more of that uh, secondly um, yes, Lolly Amelia is cute. Like I said in the episode, there's definitely going to be a new church springing up that's worshipping Lolly Amelia, and I really can't blame them. She is cute and all that, but you do you, right? So, no, let's put that, all those stuff aside for now. So now, getting into the actual episode, right? Wow, where, where should we start? Like, first of all, Fortuna, right? Mother Fortuna, um, back in, you know, when she appeared before, right? I kept on thinking she was actually Amelia's real mom, um, because, you know, I, f I figured that perhaps it's just because, um, you know, they're, they're royalty or something like that, or, or, you know, they're, they kind of have a big deal, uh, and so, you know, the, the customs and the way that they, they speak to each other is a little bit different, and so on and so forth, but apparently it's not Fortuna, and it's actually Fortuna's, uh, um, what can I call it? Fortuna is instead actually, uh, Emilia's auntie question mark because if i'm understanding the dialogue between fortuna and uh Gius correctly uh emilia's parents are actually brothers and sisters and also of fortuna's family so in essence it means it's fortuna's older brother and fortuna's older sister right i think that's what it's getting at and, and so far i don't i don't see any reason why this would be wrong based on the dialogue and whatnot i i do kind of get the feeling that this is um you know emilia was a child of incest and this probably is also part of the reason why she needs to be hidden and perhaps also one of the reasons why you know all the stuff that's that um that are happening has happened right you know i can instantly considering that there's also this seal uh with within all this as well i definitely already have a few theories and whatnot but let's let's move on first uh forward first right so then we have gius um you know Batelgius from you know the former former season and whatnot uh the archbishop of sloth right and so i kind of i kind of blanked on my mind for a second there like which archbishop he was actually representing uh you know which 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 he was actually representing so sloth right now there's definitely um now, I definitely feel that he is still of the witch's cult even right now because, you know, two things, right? One is the way that he treats Emilia. I definitely have this feeling that Emilia is, um, and, and also Fortuna, and in fact, their whole family as well. 
most possibly are related to the riches to the witches in some sort of way, right? And indeed, what I'm thinking here is perhaps uh, this entire bloodline that they have might be Satella's bloodline. So maybe her descendants and and so on and so forth. And that's why they all have that same same hair, same eyes, uh, you know, L features, and so on and so forth. And that may be also why there needs to be a seal placed. Uh, and maybe Emilia just happens to be a more uh, stronger manifestation of, of everything, and so on and so forth. Um, that would explain why Jesus and the rest of the witches cult are protecting them or helping them, etc., etc., right? And it would also explain why Jesus is still, you know, very intense in the way that he, he treats uh, Emilia and, and whatnot, right? Because even though, yeah, he's definitely a lot more polite and a lot more refined in you know in the past here we can definitely still see his his devotion and his um how can i call it yeah his uh his uh, basically devotion towards towards the you know the thing the object of his worship right so and just based on that i am thinking you know a, a few of these kinds of things now it does seem strange to me that um you know someone representing sloth would would uh worship someone representing uh envy this this much i don't particularly think the different witches are supposed to like intermingle and so on and so forth so you know based on that maybe this whole theory is wrong but that's that's what this part is all about right my musings part is about me doing some some uh predictions of very crafting and so on and so forth and trying to to um think my way through what exactly is happening here because i don't actually read the re-zero light novels um so so we have that part there and then what else fortuna herself right let's go back to fortuna a little bit the way that she talks right the, the way that she she um you know when, when she uh, on specific words uh like have a different intonation and and draws the word out and whatnot that really really reminds me of Roswell's way of speaking so is there some sort of relationship between Fortuna and Roswell like I I definitely feel that there has to be some relationship there right um, and there definitely has to be some some sort of thing there between them but then we still got Gius and 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 Fortuna as well, they seem to be a thing, and oh, it's it's so complicated here. But, um, you know, I can only uh, look at the clues as they are. I mean, we know we know that uh, Roswell is definitely more leaning towards the witch's side of things, right? He definitely has, um, has definitely, um, maybe not to say worship, but he's definitely more so on the witch's side and whatnot. And it would make sense that, you know, he probably knows about, you know, this part as well. And considering that he did take Amelia in as well, I, I do have to think that, you know, he's definitely much more in the know of, of everything than, um, than any of the other characters here, right? Uh, so what, but what exactly is the relationship with them? You know, it's so hard to say. Like, is, is, Fortuna, the reason that Roswell became the way that that he is, right? Like he's kind of like uh, going crazy and all and all that just for the sake of completing a certain task and whatnot. Is Fortuna the reason for that? I don't know, man. But indeed, I wouldn't. You know, I, I definitely would say that it's something that you can, you know, kind of slightly lean towards, if anything. So you know, we we got that point as well. Uh, what else to talk about, right? Mm. No, Fortuna, Milgius, and then at the very end, we suddenly have another archbishop arriving, right, uh, whose name is Cornelia, Corne Cornelia, R Regulus Cornelia, right, or Cornea, or something like that. I thought it was Latin, Regulus is, uh, I think it means little king, but, um, or should it be named Regulus or Regulus, uh, whatever, right, but anyways, the Archbishop of Greed, right, which is Echidona, Right? Echidona is the Witch of Greed. So, I don't know, man. But, but then again, I have mentioned before, I don't, I don't particularly think that all these various archbishops and cults and whatnot are actually specifically acting under the orders of or, or being influenced by their respective witches and so on and so forth. Like, no, even at this point, it's not entirely clear, like, what is the direct relationship between them. Like, are, are the witches themselves the objects of worship for the cult? Actually, probably so, right? They are named the Witch's Cult, after all. So, hmm. 
but but even still, right? And, you know, there's nothing specifically that's saying the, that these various witches have a direct connection with their various cults and whatnot. This is something I mentioned already back in season one. I kind of feel like the witches are sort of kind of misunderstood, and and the the cultist activities aren't really helping them. Um, also, because well, no, the cultists are perhaps doing their own thing, their own interpretation of what the witches want, and so on and so forth, and that might not. It, be exactly what the witches want because certainly you know i don't think he is there on the orders of echidona right because echidona certainly doesn't seem to you know to my surprise actually she certainly didn't know about many of the stuff within emilia's memories which i thought that she should have known about or maybe that's going to be a big twist next episode right where it's revealed that echidona echidona knew about everything all along this is all part of her master plan and so on and so forth but I don't know, I kind of feel like it's not going to, to end up in that kind of development, right? In any case, I, I think it's safe to say, though, that probably, you know, th this these events snowballed eventually into the seal being removed and whatnot, and then, through some reason or another, you know, we, we get to the part where we've been shown before, where everybody in the village was frozen, only Emilia, Emilia was frozen as well, until she was eventually fought out and rescued by Puck, right? Um, and, you know, my... my I think I said this before in my Frozen Bonds video that I do think what happened in the past is that with the unleashing of Emilia's power, you know, she can't really control her power and whatnot. Maybe she was the cause of, you know, everybody freezing into ice statues and so on and so forth. So anyways, that's those are just some preliminary guesses, but I definitely do think that they at least have a sort of basis uh, for them, right? Man, how how did Jesus end up the way that he is right now, right? And more to the point, like, what about Beatrice? Like, and what does she have to do with all of this? She and she and Jesus definitely seem to be acquaintances and whatnot. Um, perhaps even very important friends and so on and so forth. But uh, like, but I'm glad. I'm glad, right? Because we're finally getting into the past and what happened in the past and finally getting to learn about some stuff that is you know related to the various characters that we see today here and now right because i've kept on um you know, i've said this since season one as well that i really don't think the witches are entirely you know evil and antagonistic right They're, they just have their own uh, way of doing things um and for some i even believe that they are doing things for the good of the world and all that so how did everything you know completely flip around why did all these happy people suddenly turn into like like um you know like like very very evil antagonistic characters uh and you know and how did everything go to shit right we are finally entering the main part the main the good stuff of the story here so i am definitely glad um and i think that's pretty much all for this one let me know if i forgot to mention something but i do think most of the stuff that i want to talk about in this episode have been mentioned right definitely you know the 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 identity of Emilia's parents like what that bloodline actually represents the relationship with satilla why why it was Gius like this how did he gain the the battle title in front of Gius and and suddenly became you know the way that he is entirely crazy and all that what does fortuna have to do with roswell what does roswell have to do with all this what does eki don't have to do with all this ah oh, that there is so much to see i can't wait for our next episode so anyways thank you guys and i will see you guys next time bye bye